on CBC Television. Welcome to intermission. Joie de vivre or zest for life. Either one will do to describe the wiry French Newfoundlander whose name is synonymous with the fiddle. Emile Benoit is nearly 80 years old. His love affair with the fiddle, or violin as he calls it, has lasted nearly as long. They've traveled the world together, but they always return to the place where it all began. Black Duck Brook, a tiny community on a windswept tip of the Port-a-Port -Port Peninsula. Like most Newfoundland outports, the fishery has been the mainstay of its people for nearly 200 years. But it's the fiddle, not the fishery, that's put this place on the map. Black Duck Brook is the home and birthplace of the man known as Newfoundland's last master fiddler, Emile Benoit. His music has graced these shores for more than 60 years. Black Duck Brook, Winter House, Mainland, up and down the Porta Port Peninsula. A mainstay at all the French folk festivals. A legend in his own time. A lot of people play, but they're serious. They're genius. Yeah. But they don't talk to people. They I, smile. Me, I smile, I talk to people. Huh? Yeah. An ability that transcends his French roots, that's taken Emile Benoit halfway around the world. England, Wales, France, Norway, Canada, of course, and the United States. This music festival, three years ago in New Orleans, is typical of Emile's universal appeal. This summer's folk festival in St. John's is typical of Emile's popularity at home. We but if they appreciate him in other countries and love him throughout Newfoundland, in Black Duck Brook, they claim him. How long have you known Emile Benoit? All my life. And what do you remember about Emile as a, as a young man? Well, he was a violin player. And I had an uncle that used to play the violin too, Arson Benoit. Mm -hmm. And he used to come there. And they had each a violin. And they used to play that. Now they threw it up. Oh, it was beautiful, my dear. Well, the more you see, well, we know them all around here. You know what? But he lives right here. So he's a neighbor. Emil is a neighbor here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Good neighbor. Nothing but the best. Nothing but the best. But then Emil Benoit has been more than a neighbor all these years. Fisherman, farmer, blacksmith, dentist and doctor of sorts, the man everyone in the community turned to for help. I said, did God put me in this world for, for something like that? A claim Emile backs up with the story of an amazing birth 78 years ago on a bitterly cold March night. His mother had already lost three babies. Emile was her fourth pregnancy. He weighed one pound seven ounces. The doctor gave him one chance to live, ordering his father to share the family sheep. He said, get that wool and warm it good onto the stove. And I put your little baby boy into, into the wool and shove him under the stove. And he said, keep him there for 18 days with the same temperature. And you know what? My mother had no food. But my father had a horse, a mare, and she had a foal, eh? And he, he milked. The mayor, for to give me food, uh, so funny, you know. It's, it's unbelievable. My story is unbelievable. I don't care what anybody say. And having survived those odds, he wasn't about to let a little thing like tuberculosis defeat him either a few years down the road. And I cured myself with cutlery. eye. Oh, it's incredible. And all my brothers and... They didn't, don't want to take that. And me, I was, 
My heart and soul, I want to live. And he wanted to play the violin. Oh, how he wanted to play from the time he was a little boy. I said, uh, Daddy, oh, my God, you're able to make a violin. Make me one, eh? Leave me a violin. Now, he just thought they got eh? So in the mall first, he always had a pocket knife in the, in the pocket. So he held a big pocket knife, but a longest boy. And he pick up a piece of board out of the wood box, and then he start whoosh, whoosh, uh, cutting, cutting, and me, my two eye, what about left side? Look at. And so it began, a lifetime of fiddling and making a name for himself along the way. So for the square dance, my gosh, Emil was there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had lots of square dance, lots of parties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was good. Everybody enjoyed his playing. Oh, my gosh, yes. If Emil wasn't there, they say, well, it's not going to be no good because Emil is not going to be there. So they say, yeah, <laughs> yeah but honest to God. Hello, doctor. But Emil Benoit was 62 years old before the rest of Newfoundland got to hear him, before his travels began in earnest. Gerald Thomas, a folklore professor and now his manager, encouraged him to share his music with the rest of the world. And the sky was the limit. This trip last summer was plane ride number 82. But it's a schedule that takes him away from his family in Black Duck Brook away from the woman he credits with much of his success, his wife, Rita. Yeah, I feel happy for him. He saw a lot of the world and he met a lot of people. And I didn't stop him from doing anything, you know. It was, he, it was a, a part of his life, things that he liked to do, eh? Yeah. yeah. He says that he owes his career to you because you let him go. But that's what he says, yeah, I let him go, but I always stayed home and watched over everything and waited for him to come back. And he always came back in one piece. <laughs> and he always came back to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He always came back. And so do his children, all 13 of them, even those who left Black Duck Brook try and get back to visit, to reminisce. I'm really proud to be his daughter, because he's a very special man. And uh, like I say, the older we get, the more we understand, and the older he becomes, and the more precious he becomes to us. Mm. You know, like our days maybe are numbered right now, and it's very sad for us. It's mm. like we're trying to uh, scrape every single moment we can with him, to hear his voice, or to touch him. Yeah. Yeah. Something we can hold on to. Yeah. The family reunion was especially sweet this past summer. A few months earlier, Emil discovered he had cancer, requiring surgery in St. John's. He's much better now, but even through it all, his spirit stayed high, thanks to his faith and his fiddle. There was just one little glitch with this violin business. With so many children, Emile could have formed a small orchestra, except none of them played until the baby came along. Now 20 years old, Roberta took up the fiddle when she was only eight. And when she comes home to visit, you can hear Benoit fiddle music in stereo. you rate her playing? My daughter, she don't practice. If she would have practiced from the time she started, she was eight years old when she started. Today, I wouldn't be able to touch her, and I don't think very much in Newfoundland could touch her, but she didn't. Do you still I tell her to practice? Too much to advise in her mind. Now, is it true that you're more interested in boys than fiddles? Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm human. <laughs> And even Papa agrees people are more important than things. A love affair such as Emile has had with the violin is a rare experience, and in many ways, a solitary thing. Work hard all day, go to bed, sleep. In the morning, get up, five o'clock, half past five. Light the stove, take the violin, and all alone, my dreams some kind of a dream that you had last night. 
And if you're lucky, others will be able to share the dream with you. That's, that's more important in the whole world. Yeah. That's better than music. People, to me. Yeah. And when you can combine the two of them... That's so. <laughs> you got a man. Well, that's intermission for this week. Tune in again next Thursday for the story of another Newfoundland legend, Dr. John Olds of Twillingate. Before